Hello everyone and welcome to my nerdy little corner of the internet. Today we are digging into the math of Lorcana to see what is the best way to build your collection. For the sake of this video, I'll be mostly looking at the cheapest way to get a playset of every card from Rise of the Floodborne. For simplicity, I will be looking at the TCG player low prices for near mint non-foil cards on the morning of December 8th, date of this script being written. We will also keep shipping out of this problem in order to simplify calculations and reduce variance. First, let's look at the two extremes of the sealed single spectrum. Let's start with the easy one. Simply going onto TCG Player and buying a playset of every card in Rise of the Floodborne. On the day of collected data, the price of a playset of every card on TCG Player was valued at $976.20. On the other end of the spectrum is collecting every card playset by simply opening packs. This is much more complex. In this method, we will purchase one pack at a time. Once we get a fifth plus copy of a card, we sell it onto TCG Player for its current value allowing us to discount our expenses. There's a formula called the coupon collector's problem, which is categorized by the following question. I want to collect one of each coupon from a collection of coupons with equal probability, randomly receiving a coupon each time I purchase that coupon. Let's reframe this question for our scenario. The coupon collection problem is framed by, I want to get one of every card in a certain rarity from opening cards one at a time. How many cards would I need to open in order to get one of each card? We need to split the set into individual rarities as the coupon collector problem requires that each card have the same probability of being opened. The expected value of the coupon collector problem, or CCP, is equal to n times hn such that n is the number of coupons possible and hn is the nth harmonic number. A harmonic number is the sum of the reciprocals of the first n natural numbers. So the first harmonic number is 1 divided by 1, the second harmonic number is 1 divided by 1 plus 1 over 2, and so on and so forth. For a great example, let's look at the common slot and see how many packs we need to open in order to get one of each common in the amber slot. Thankfully, Disney Lurkana packs typically have a common of each color, so we can constrain our number of coupons to 12. We will ignore the foil slot for now to get a baseline idea and concept of the CCP. To estimate the number of packs we need to open to get one of each amber common is 12 times the 12th harmonic number, which is equal to 37.24 packs. We will round this up to the nearest whole number, so 38 packs. Since the distributions of each color is uniform and independent of each other, we can reasonably say that one needs an average of 38 packs to get one of every common in Rise of the Floodborne. But we aren't looking for one of each common. We want four of each common. However, simply multiplying this number by four is too simple. No, no, no. We have opened 38 packs to get 12 unique cards. This means that we have 26 duplicates. So we need to take these into consideration. Thankfully, Donald J. Newman and Lawrence Shep created a generalization of the CCP where we want more than one of each coupon. The formula of the expected value of this is n times log n plus m minus 1 times n times log log n plus ncm plus on, where m is the number of each card we desire and cm is a constant based on m. In our case, 4. ON is basically a mathematical term for error. Since this is a generalization, it's not precise. So the ON we will simply ignore for the sake of this situation. So now we plug our numbers in for the Amber Commons and we find that we need to open an average of 84 packs in order to get 4 of each common. In order to add the foils, we are going to figure out the probability of the foil being an Amber Common. According to Lurkania.com, 39.27% of packs have a foil common, with 1 in 6 commons being amber. This means that there is a 6.54% chance of a foil amber common. Thus, we can divide the packs required by 1.07, making it 80 packs, 
to get a play set of every common in a set. For the uncommons, there are 54 uncommons with 3 uncommons to a pack with a 19.01% chance of an uncommon foil. The expected number of uncommons we need to open is 540. Divide this by the expected number of uncommons in a pack of 3.1901 and we get an expected 170 packs to get a playset of every uncommon. Now we get to the rares. To find the expected number of cards in each rarity is the same calculation. We find that you need to open 470 rares, 143 super rares, and 85 legendaries on average. Keep in mind that all of these numbers are on average, there is a wide amount of variance. Now, to figure out how many packs we need to open in order to reach each of these together. When looking at this chart here, we have an expected number of cards of each of the rarities in a pack. This adds foils into consideration. In order to open a playset of every rare, super rare, and legendary, we will need to open an expected amount of 404 packs. This is enough booster boxes stacked on top of each other to be the same height as legendary boyfriend Travis Kelsey, who is 6'6". Six six. This will also cost you $2,448 in sealed product at MSRP. Even if you could sell every 5th plus copy of a card in your collection on TCG Player, using the average value of each rarity, it would be $911. Well, there is a massive amount of variance in this calculation, and so this is not a guarantee while buying singles has no variance. You can simply wait for the market to go down and buy singles. So, ultimately, Buying singles is the better option here, but what if there was a nice little in-between? I have a theoretical method I like to call the expected collector's value lost method. Basically, the question to answer is, can opening a pack likely decrease leftover costs of the collection? I don't have more than simply purchasing the same value in singles. As an example, let's look at a person who hasn't even started their collection yet. The current collection value left is $976.20 as we established at the beginning of the video. I can calculate the expected value of a pack to see if it's more than the $6 MSRP booster pack. I do that by calculating the probability of each card being opened thanks to the data collected by Locania.com and then multiplying that probability by the value of the card. Sum up the expected value of the cards and you compare it to the cost of the pack. You then give each card that you don't have a play set of in your collection a projected collector lost value equal to the expected value of the card. Foils and enchanted versions of cards have a value equal to the value of the normal as the collection left value is the sum cost of finishing out your collection in singles. We see that with the very first pack of Rise of the Floodborne, the expected collection left loss is $6.55. Since this value is higher than the cost of a pack, I should buy a pack instead of ordering singles. So I will buy a pack and let's see what I open. Alright, so I opened a Flynn Rider and a Sisu and some other cards. Let's add them to my collection and remove the number of cards from my collection sheet here on this Excel sheet. As you can see, the collection left value decreased. However, the projected collection left loss was unaffected. This is because I haven't finished a playset of anything, and thus the projected collection left loss remains the same. Now, let me input my current collection. As you can see, I have gotten plenty of playsets in my collection, and my collection left value has decreased to the point that if I wanted to buy singles for the rest of the set, it would cost me $421.51. However, the projected collected left loss has gone under $6, and thus, if my sole goal for opening packs was gathering cards for my collection, I should stop and finish my collection by buying off singles. Now, I'm going to keep opening packs because I like draft, I play limited, and I put value on the serotonin boost that I get from opening cards and packs. This is not an end-all be-all, this is a way to help understand 
how much value you could get from a pack based on what you have already opened in the past. So this is a little formula that I've created and I believe that this is the best method for collecting. I really hope you liked this video. I put a ton of effort and research into this video. If you did like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. As more aspects of the math within Lorcana come out, I will definitely be sure to look into it and make more videos for y'all. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hey, Post Production Knife here. Just letting you know that I didn't really show the Excel sheet because it is very, very messy, but. In a bit of time, I plan on putting out a version of the collection loss calculations that I have up so that it could be available to the public, but I didn't really have time to make it pretty, so it might come out sometime next year. Okay, bye.